possibility of keeping that announcement away from the organizer of this event. <laughs> We now move to the valedictorian addresses. The valedictorian in each program is an honor traditionally reserved for the students with the highest grade point averages. The GPA is an indicator, a key indicator of excellence in all elements of study in our very rigorous professional curriculum. The ability to sustain high grades throughout the program shows perseverance and commitment. But we look for even more. We look for and select an individual who can speak as a representative of their class and who allows us to consider their leadership and service to the institution and their overall excellence in their program. Not speaking, but deserving of recognition, is the salutatorian. The salutatorian is traditionally the person with the second highest grade average in their class. And again, a record of leadership and service. The salutatorian for the undergraduate program is Lauren Nicole Bashan, who received a grade average of 3.75. Nicely done. <laughs> the valedictorian for this year's graduate undergraduate graduating class weighing in with a 3.84 grade average and a sterling record of contribution to the school is Richard Lyle Boatman. Lyle Boatman. personality above talent, doing nothing fabulously, and having more, more, did we end up at the Salk Institute on this gorgeous day. For most of us, we simply set a goal, being an architect. It's an odd circumstance of this noble profession that after all this work, we are not quite there yet. We have miles to go, particularly in a U.S. economy which seems slow to justify capital investment in brick and mortar. Each of us must make it a priority to understand the economics that affect the future of our, our profession. I'm just selling my thesis. <laughs> Hopefully you all enjoyed the thesis exhibition last night, which kept months of sleepless nights and weeks of living in the terror of one's own mind, divided between the thoughts of what sells the big idea, and for some of us, what is the big idea? We've each accomplished an amazing feat of presenting some original thought, mostly without the benefit of Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, and in more than 140 characters. And we've been able to do this because we were potted and cajoled and, well, quite frankly, threatened by the fine faculty of New School of Architecture and Design. But what are we going to do tomorrow when there's no prodding and no cajoling and no enlightened leadership before us? In our culture today, we have misplaced the commonness of common sense. On this graduation day, as a credit to the National Architectural Accreditation Board, we have a common understanding based on the entirety of our existence for the past three or five years of professional education. And by the way, for those of you parents who might be disappointed about the difference between the number of years in the program and the number of quarters your favorite student required to graduate, consider yourself lucky. Had my parents lived long enough to see this day, they would have been waiting 38 years since I graduated from high school. But back to that common understanding, Leon Van Shaik at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology in Australia, in his book entitled Spatial Intelligence says that we archaeologists have more in common today with other architects around the world than we have in common with our own families. This commonality we share today will also quickly fade. With each self-defining tweet, we twitter away our common experience, morphing into the unique experience of each of us standing alone in our place in history. And this is the crucial thesis question. Where will that place in history be? 
What will the future we design for ourselves look like and who will be there with us? Ultimately, this question comes down to being and becoming. And in the final analysis, the most important thing we'll, we will each do is design that outcome, that being, if we choose to do so. Or we can just get caught up in the doing and having, which seems to be where our culture focuses its energy. And the remaining pages of my speech are not in the podium book for some reason, so I'm glad I was prepared and brought another, another copy. <laughs> Just to be clear, progress toward being of any import most likely does not exist within your comfort zone. All progress, by definition, moves us beyond our comfort zones. And this is true whether the issue at hand is red or blue, as in politics today, or green, as in economics and sustainability, or the color of love, or marriage, or a relationship, whatever. Progress, if it is to be had at all, requires some breach of comfortable boundaries. In designing your being, which boundaries are you willing to cross? On a recent visit to New School, Robert Ivey, former editor-in-chief of Architectural Record and now CEO of the American Institute of Architects, commented that there are approximately 108,000 uh, licensed architects in the United States. By comparison, there are 200,000 lawyers in California. Think about the impact that we members of the class of 2012 can have on this small profession. Who do you intend to be? And what comfortable boundary are you willing to cross to become that dream? W. Edwards Deming, the conservative economist, largely responsible for the ideological changes that created the modern industrial powerhouse that is Japan, said, change is not necessary. Survival is not mandatory. The irony, of course, is that in the profession of architecture today, it is perhaps obvious, change is necessary. Who will we become? To our distinguished guests, faculty, and students, I am deeply honored to represent the class of 2012 at this point of commencement. To all my peers, both in my class and those of you in the audience, we have the pleasure today of considering in this amazing place who we will become. I wish for each of you all the best in your journey, and I hope that we can again share the commonality that we enjoy today, whether you design the next Taj Mahal or the best relationship ever, you will be successful if you first set a goal for whom you will be. All the doing and having that is necessary will fall into place. Thank you for your consideration.